There are so many things that make you human. One I'd like to draw your attention to, can't. Relationship creates, can't creates. Can and can't create. They're not in opposition until viewed as that. What they are stand alone human in relationship from one approach creation unconditional from another approach just like the now is constantly still and moving it's just how you view it how you approach it what angle you're at at your current and your current is never current it is always more as soon as you know yourself as current you are now more it is so instant so beautiful so gratifying and never ever sought after. Humanity seeks itself in furtherment as a constant. It is its truth. You must understand something though. Let's look at the big picture here. Isn't, thank you Roxanne, isn't natural always becoming more? Isn't nature in and of itself constant growth? Is it not constantly changing form, even though the dying and decaying, isn't that constant becoming more? Humanity looks at things as dying less than, cycling in life, because that's what they understand as truth. But see, those dying elements are becoming more of themselves. They have yet to be a dying element from a human, but an expanding element from themselves. Isn't that natural? I would ask you to see the now without any eyes of measurement for a moment, just yet a moment for yourself. Look how it is natural to grow without effort. And when you effort to grow, then you stay the same. So you are pushing literally against yourself. That is separation, is it not? That's the vibration that contains and sustains the current. Because you are intention and you are God intending. That in and of itself is truth. You have all truths of all nows. You are unique God. Even the fractal in and of itself Many of you don't demise yourself as God, but you must be wielding the godly powers that you have. Otherwise, you cannot have the experience of truth. And since you are all truth, then of course you have truth. And the fractal now crumbles away, doesn't it? Is it simply because you are birthing your first awareness of creation as a God? See, all gods that come here and don't know their gods died a God. Simple. That's the experience. That's the game. But you guys are not dying to God. You're dying to nothing. You're living. The validation of dying is God being God, truthfully giving itself an experience of dying. What happens in death is remembrance. But it's just a portion of you. But does that portion die? Or is it remembered itself in a dream as you wake up going, wow, that was almost real? See, these are questions and compilations of the mind that seek better understanding of itself. But how about this? Do you have the employment within your range of awareness? Justification, no. Worthiness, oh certainly. To know you are creation now realized and this self that you have created is your classic addition. You are a starting point, aren't you? You will never not know yourself as the person you are today. 
you will always remember you. The identity you beseech today will never go away. It's the way you relate to reality that gives you the content, the content of relationship, that's all. But who and what is that that's giving you awareness? I would ask your vibration to feel a truth today with each other. We're all gods here. Is the God that you're remembering, is the God that you are feeling ever been lost? Or is it the relationship to reality that's lost? And it's truly not lost. It just repeats itself, giving the apparition around itself as lost. As I don't know what I can, not allowed. What should I? Can we? Is that sure? Can we go? The, I'm not. I don't know. Is that the fractal in and of itself is just simply the way it relates to reality, experiencing this God holy? Uh-oh. A new truth is about to crumble. The old truth, isn't it? It's about to consume it as evolution, the natural, isn't it? This might scare you, and I hope it does. That's a good thing. See, hope and scary is good. And it's bad. See, that's the relationship. But right now, you're not feeling that hope is good and hope is bad. You're recognizing what creates reality from the experience of the God that has focused on the reality as real instead of the relationship, the vibration, the creator of the reality. So now begs the question to an intelligent mind, have you ever forgotten? And the answer is no, of course not. No one's ever forgotten. They validated something that they were not, therefore giving themselves a feeling of emptiness. When you were birthed, you were aware of God. Your infancy stages in the relationship to reality has no constitution of knowing itself as God, but it is yet connected. But since the connection covets only one thing, the emptiness, fear, I don't know. That relationship was a truth that was accepted. That truth accepted created a relationship to reality, which gives the illusion of a fractal. You've been you the whole time. You've never not been you. That's why you're remembering you. We're not talking about a bigger God, multi-diamond faceted idea, creating realities and dimensions and flying through the galaxies. Who gives a shit about that God? Because that God is all around you. Are you not enough as just this God? Is that why you seek the bigger God? Is that why humanity wants to remember the whole self and all the parallel lives, past and futures, incarnations abound, when this God is creating those things? But see, this God just creates this tiny little relationship that feels a certain particular about reality that claims through the notions of validation that I am not God. That is fucking exquisite. You know these things now. You might be afraid, but you're not. You want to be afraid, but you can't. Your relationship to reality through a particular approach, as I say, to the now, gives you, oh, I am afraid. Gives you, oh, shit. Because you're God, creating that relationship as a truth. But the undiscovered country calls the unknown 
to the now? Why have you been turning it away? Why have you been turning away from the unknown? Mm -hmm. Because maybe the unknown was not. And you only looked at the known. Oh boy, here we go. Because the known was time. And you not knew, not knew, to look at now. You only were taught, coveted, to look at time. And therefore, time does not know itself because it is an echo of itself. That is the neutral from expansion to look at itself keeps it the same. Accepting it moves it. All of you have felt the accepting self and you scare yourselves because you're feeling weird, uncomfortable, uncertain, I don't know. And you try desperately to look in time to label it. And you do a valiant job of it because you get depressed, you get scared, you take charge, you make changes, you make decisions of limitation because you seek time for these things and that relationship to reality is a fractal, but you are not. You've never been a fractal. You created a holodeck to where you, in your first incident of relating to this reality, did not know itself as a reflection. There are more details about it, but they're not interesting, really. They might take your logical mind down a path of lack. Just trucking right along. You don't need to do that today. Today you can allow, today you are God. Now let's talk about the vibration of God. Vibration of God is the constant change of all vibrations. God cannot be pinpointed. Many try to. They try to put God still yet today outside of themselves. They need something better than because they feel hopeless, empty, less than, depleted, unworthy. They seek the idea of payment. They seek sanctity. They seek holiness. They have to grasp on to an idea to be a part of it, to be filled. And their daily occurrences with churches, or whatever idea, let's say, um, tabernacle they're giving alms to, it doesn't matter. It's whatever fills the emptiness becomes their religion, becomes their sanctity, becomes their defenses, and they will fight for it, and they will kill you if you challenge it. They'll do anything to keep it, if the devout relationship is that truth. That's why you can't preach to people, people. In the words of the Almighty, fuck them. Because they're not broken and they're not lost. You know what they are? They're the same as you. They're gods. God being gods. Vibration, changing, giving God, experience of gods through gods. Mm -hmm. So those gods, like you, are vibration, frequency, relationship, unknowing, knowing, unknowing, knowing, worthiness, unworthiness, things like that. But what's happening here is those gods are valuing truth, and the truth is time. And those truths cannot be shattered with energy of lack. Because lack enhances them, doesn't it? So you have to be in accord, a certain tempo, <clears throat> a tone. And you know what it is. It's bright light, authentic. See, that vibration is a pulse and it's constantly thumping in a 365 degree bubble. 
in every direction. Your now. Mm -hmm. And it's giving off certain frequencies that you validate to give creation, God, potential of choice, especially when you live in time. Choice in the now is a different class. We'll get to that. But this potential of time, people go, oh, I feel you. You're weird. You're odd. I like you. Let's play. Blah, 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 blah. All interpretation, all looking in time, until you or another abounded light worker chooses not to be time, to be the relationship with itself and the pure. Hmm? Not that it's unpure over here, but the authentic relationship to the self harmony, unfiltered. And the filters aren't bad. Remember, let's not play polarity in this class today, okay? Be masters with me. So this relationship with authentic says to the world, everyone that's co-creating with you, your world, connection. Not connection back to God, but immediately knowing they are other than the time they relevant as real. Hmm? Then that self internally is challenged by everything that it values. And therefore it is feeling weird. And you guys know your own reactions to oddness. You run to the same, don't you? You look for colors that are home. Hmm? Much like, let's say, Roxy was riding the bus today. And there was a couple sitting there. And all of a sudden, Roxy perked up. Hmm? She got this lady's caught her eye. Perked up and just paid attention. She felt something. The lady moved her eyes and leaned forward and looked at the restaurant that went by. But after she read the sign, you can see that it was a disappointment. But it was a perk because right then, Roxy discerned the colors of the restaurant reminded her of home. So she thought it was a cultural restaurant that was her upbringing. But after she read the sign, she realized it wasn't. See, she was looking for familiar. And that gave her self-worth, comfort, reality, and time that exquisitely validates the fractal over and over again. You give them the authentic. They have to be authentic because they have accepted you in the reality. They feel it. They can deny it. That's not your responsibility or job or anything. It's not right or wrong. What you are is potential. That is always. And what you are getting is potential. That is always. That's why their nature is expansion. Exploration takes no inquisition. It takes no effort. It takes no intention. It happens if you get out of your way more fast than you can handle. But you handle things, so therefore you stay the same. This vibration creates reality. We're going to instill upon you how you always repeat. You must know your action of self-value first before you can create once again. Everyone wants to create like a creator. But their first statement is, I can't create what I want. Why not? And you ask me why you can't create with those diarrhea of words? Those words that are the conjecture of lack? And say, uh, keep you the same. And then you're wondering why you haven't changed. But if you are sharp and you know your intelligent mind, that mind says the now is perfect. It has everything provided, but what you lack is time. And you want time in the now because those things give you what you need. Purpose, pleasure, identity, image, outcome, ability, creation, manifestation. Things that are natured in humanistic terms relating to reality of I am only human. 
You're not human. You're creating humanity. So to know these things intimately is a master level. It's a skill that is acquired over time. It is, and you're doing it. It's simple and it's effortless. It's complete allowance and never wondering why ever again. Why things are? Well, because you, our reality is. Now it becomes a value system. Do I validate myself and lack, keeping myself human? Or do I allow that reality, showing myself I am God? And I have never not been that. Remember what I said at the beginning, how you approach the now? Wherever you approach it from becomes your reality. You've never been separated. What you've been doing is this. I am lack. I am God. I am lack. I am lack. I am lack. I am God. The God is whatever you want to call it, but I call it authentic. It's your truth in the moment. Never congruency of time. But your valid mind and memory knows one thing. Human. So no wonder you're so human in time, huh? But in the now, I bet you're not. But it feels wicked, scary, uncomfortable. And you create the idea hmm, of drama out of that, but not in what you call purpose creation. It's the way you relate in the now to the now that creates the potential to feel that way. And you accept that feeling because that's what's familiar. So it's easier to go to the familiarity, even though the familiarity is shitty time. You'd rather have that than the unknown because the unknown is beyond measure. And all you know is measure. Now you're seeing how these worlds tie together. Well, they're just simply approaches of the now. Now you understand creation from a creator point of view. This creator called Roxanne is creating a reality. The fractal is not. The fractal is a time-based reference point that validates the God as time for an experience. But Roxy, Tommy Jean, Jennifer and Rose, Tom, Dana, Svetlana, Daniel, Judith, ah, oh, Sue and Nancy, Brent Colton. What are you guys? Look at Janet. Look at Jamie. Huh? What are you guys? All of those words, those identities I just named are not fractals. You are gods. You are the vibration of God that has awareness of itself as God and the symbiotic with its everlasting two that are one. Right? That's what you are. It's simple. It's not hard. But it's a bitch to accept if you validate only the fractal. Because the fractal relates to reality through lack. Otherwise, it doesn't know itself. And since you chose lack as the superior thrust of reality, the first knowing, then of course you have valid fractals. But the fractal only occurs one place, guys. The fractal only occurs in time. The fractal has never been in the now. So the God for experience chooses time. The fractal, the way the God feels, relating to it, names it fractalized for experience. 
this God knows it's naming itself as a fractal for experience. Don't ask why. Don't do it. Because then you look in time. You seek betterment. When you're already more in the now. And you validate lack. And you tuck yourself neatly once again in time. And you know yourself as a fractal God. Simple. So let's talk about vibration now. If you know your God, God doesn't know itself as lack until it creates lack. Then it knows itself as lack. And when it knows itself as lack, then it is lack in full. No question. But you discovered something that you have a choice in the now not to be lack or the fractal. In the now, it's perfect. You are exquisitely non-polarized. You are harmony. But then why is it so easy to choose lack again? Well, let us ask you this. How many times have you chosen lack? Once. And the entire memory is given of times that you've chosen lack. It's one approach to the now and then in that now, you look at each portion of that divided in time and you feel timeline and you can count choices. But it's just one time, isn't it? It's just once you've been separated. I don't want you to do anything about this because that would be lackful. That would be. I'm going to validate myself as not God. Roxy sees the two worlds, feels the two worlds, and the mind of separation wants to know right now, what happens when you don't choose? What is that? And she can't know because that's lack. Therefore, she, as the lack, cannot know. But she, as the God, knows. So is the experience going on right now, a God, full will, knowing it's choosing itself as lack? Truly not forgotten, just here for an experience. You had a creator on this planet, his name was Seth. He's a different collective of speakers. And he said something. He said, it's already over. So quick. It's a million years old. If you relative it to the now, space time. See, it happens instantaneous in the now. You create a reality of separation. Now, with that reality of separation, it's one choice moment. And then with time, you divide it into a million choices. That's all. And then you choose each choice to feel yourself as lack. But this God choosing 
is not conscious intention choice. It's exploratory allowance that needs no attention. How else could you ever have felt victimization? Where else could you ever ask why? Name another reality that says how. Where else have the words can't been spoken? Only one place. Here. This is where it occurs. This tiny little moment of time divided into 17 billion years and God's come and explore it. And you're in and out of realities in time, but you're always now. The forgotten self that doesn't know itself as God does. The forgotten self trying to escape itself is keeping itself as that. Because that's what the reality truth gives. So the God is not a victim to the reality. The God, you, is an exquisite experiencer of this unknown world. Let me tell you these words. You cannot ever try to stop it. Because then you will stay there. Now we all know that the exaplan, we all have that. And it is a, it does not not work. It always works, okay? It's perfect because it's what is. There's never the victimization of being stuck here, recycled here, all that shit, because see, that's the beauty of what it has created. Death is what you call relating back to the now with no more time. A lot of it as an experience has been suggested on the planet as a remembrance. But aren't these particular ways that the unknown has been translated in a human psyche of time placed neatly about the timelines and then you come across it and accept that truth and then reality is created for you. I don't think you're ever gonna worry about how to create anything again. I don't think you need to do that ever again, do you? So now begs the question, what happens? What happens now? When you don't validate time, the easy go-to vibration, the God's creating a reality of lack, looks at it, Energy follows awareness, feels it. In that world of time, has this body, has this senses, has this equation of interpretation that is a truth. It is a truth that is created. And every time this God focuses on that reality as its truth, which can never focus on a false, by the way, you know that now. And it gets that experience. But in that reality world of time, the relationship when you are there focusing is changing. 
So you're changing the holodeck by being the holodeck. See, when you try to change the holodeck through the lack, then the holodeck stays the same. However, now you know something. It is the natural exploration in all of us. Discovery. The discovery is, if I accept the reality, then I know the programming. I accept everything, then I must become it. Because the program was written in the psyche of time, is that you are in opposition to the holodeck. But if you become the holodeck, the holodeck cannot remain because you are the creator. Then you are now. And then there's no time. But you're not going to remember all of this stuff that you think you're going to remember. Those are human things that have been scattered and dusted and sprinkled around timelines by another human experiences. Billions and billions of timelines have never been explored by you guys, but they're being explored by others. Doesn't matter, right? This is your world. This is your experience. Okay? So you're relating to this self now that says, I am this. And that means you don't divide polarity. You become polarity. And a lot of you don't want to do that because that would mean all the things of polarity. It would mean good, bad, and different. It mean suffocation. It would mean failure. It would mean success. It would mean a thousand things. But all those meanings, as we said in earlier class, is how you relate to human. And when you validate human, you stay human. You have to relate to humanity. You have to be the center point of your isness relating to the now. Bending the light as a creator instead of the created. Yes. So what you're not going to get is whatever your mind thinks. What you are going to get is an unknown feeling. When you feel different, then you, are, you know you are remembering. What you will remember is intimately individual. It cannot be transpired through words of another's experience because those lie in time and they are human. You're not here any longer to be human. You've done that. You are the potential to expand out of it before death. That's all. And you can. Because we're all having an experience together of this potential. We're all creating a reality together that say truce to the self of experience. And each individual focus that is looking upon this moment of stillness, this now, bending it in whatever way is their own choice. Is there anything more unconditional, more perfect than that? No. Because it's all that is. So now when you release yourself from the common desires of humanity, the lackful needs of tomorrows, the wants and the desires, the avoidance of failures, all these things that you have been beseeching yourself to go after every fucking day, now you felt just now a stillness about a relationship to all of this. And that stillness is something to be explored. It doesn't validate itself in time. Your mind is the points of fractal time. Ready? Here, there, yesterday, tomorrow, next week, next year, last year, last lifetime, two lifetimes ago, 1872. 
They're all around you. Do you think they're anywhere else? They're not. They're right there. All you have to do is look and you get the truth of it. And if you're lack, you say that's not the truth. And it has to be because you just said it's not. And that's your truth. You get it? Those things about time, those things about things. It's your unique way to relate to lack. And since you only knew, then you must use the lack to create the lack and you do every time you validate human. That's the cycle, the wheels. And you are not doing that as a truth every day now. There's some things you're letting go of. There's some things you don't want to know. See, to release and allow is painful at moments, disheartening at others, surrender at other times, accepting failure. However you relate to it is the way you're going to be that God for that moment. That God is a creator creating a reality that this God, the fractal God, claims as a failure. Then God creates a reality that accepts as a failure. So it can be more than it is. And it is always. So these things are yours to play with now. Please know that you are not a fractal. The relationship of the now that you focus on, it's like a bank, a data bank. You plug into it and you get that experience. You unplug, you plug into this one. When you're unplugged, you're fucking scared because you've never been unplugged. When you are, you're like, ha, ah, plug, 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 plug. Ah, whew, I'm shitty again. Or whatever. It seems like it would be caught. But you can't be caught. You are the truth. You know yourself as the fractal when you are focusing on the fractal but you know yourself as the God that is choosing to focus on time to create the fractal. You seem lost in here, almost a victim of that can't escape. But see, that's the exquisite God speaking once again, saying, I am these things. You have to become indifferent. But don't label it so fucking hard. Don't logical it as a human. Don't map it. Don't become the generation that always is trying to figure out things. Because then you have the emptiness fulfilled that way and that way and that way and that way. And that emptiness filled is human. Because there is no emptiness. When you feel different, you know you are empty of lack. You call it emptiness because it doesn't feel like emptiness. You call it separation. You call it I'm scared. You call it weird, odd, unknown because you don't feel what it is to be full. to be no lack. But in a sense, you are opposition. You call it lack because that's what lack does. Lack looks at fullness as lack. Otherwise, it couldn't know itself as that. Good shit.
The word enjoy is tricky. I would like you to enjoy the rest of the time you choose to be here. But enjoy would mean expectation in time. But you guys understand enjoying, don't you? Hmm? You are encompassed in joy. Whether it is having a cigarette after two hours, the first morning cup of coffee, hmm? touch of a romantic partner after three or four days of absence. You fully become that moment. Hmm? That's what enjoying is. But enjoyment is not polarized. It's full of the natural. You have to be natural to be enjoyment. You are when you are no time. When you forget about everything else. And as soon as you start thinking about time, then the sensation of joy leaves you. And then you get back to life, don't you? Reality, serious. And you start to play with time as questions, answers, dilemmas, situations, relationship on what you know yourself as the fractal. This God goes into the fractal world and has to use all the what? Resources of that. But enjoyment is in the world. Enjoying creation. Because the enjoying self of that moment does not validate time, fractal. It is in complete self-allowance. I would say the extreme of selfish gets you there. It's what you want to do without question, without how, without deserving. You slip into it seamlessly and you are lost in the now, full of joy, embodying it. Even if it's just for a moment, that's what the now is. You've been there. But when you do it in the consistency of now, then it becomes very uneasy. Why aren't you enjoying it? Because from the fractal point of view, enjoyment is only certainties. The experience from the fractal point of view on what would be enjoying. And when you get that in your now, then you give yourself permission to let go of all time and be the now. And there, of course, you get what you always have been. Complete bliss. That's beyond measurement. You get the hint of it, but you don't get the full Monty yet. You will. But see, enjoyment is not saved for polarized moments. Enjoyment is being selfish about your sadness and about your happiness. Enjoyment seeks nothing of time because it knows itself is full. And it's all around you every moment. And when you feel that pang, that lack, calling and rearing its ugly head because you are in time, validating time, to know it different, you are masters doing your work. And now you know that that feeling of separation, of emptiness is actually full because you're no longer validating enjoyment as time, certainties, definitions, labels, a stiff drink after work. It's all relating to the now as God, not as the fractal. We'll explain this again and again and again until it sinks in. And it's all over the timelines. It's anywhere you want to look. And how you're going to get it is by leaving it alone. Because if you try to get it, then you push it away. Because it's already becoming more in you. If you let it, hmm, it happens faster. Yes. 
more water or things. It's not about anything anymore, is it? Whenever you think it's about something, that's time. That's human. The now is about be it. And then know what the now is. So let's stop making ourselves a small little fractal, remembering it's a God. Let's change the approach, approach of relationship as I'm God, looking at a created reality, instant in the now, divided up into a billion years, and go poking around each one. And within that experience, the God must forget it's God, because that's the experience. But the God knows itself as evolutionary, so it can't last, because there's no time. So now you will relate to that God as a fractal from a different awareness, a different approach, a different self. And you will feel differently, and therefore you validate other than time. You still have timelines and things to place in time, sure. But these are new. These are now. It's different now. very different, vibrationally different, feeling different. You guys want to feel the way you've always felt? The good, the bad, the indifference, the mediocre, right in the middle, balancing? So you are and then you are not. You're always free and always imprisoned if you like to be. And it all happens in the same now. It's how you're just moving around it. Let's look at the now as a big pillar. And you're going attracting, right? Experiencing the now. Time, now, time, 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 now, time, now, time. God. That's all. You guys put so much value because the exquisite truth of lack is value. What's real and what's not. And therefore, when you're here, you validate those truths until you hear God say, I can let go of that truth. And then your reality is recreated through vibration. So you're literally not looking around in so many timelines that are set in time, but you're creating new pockets of time for others to look at differently, to feel. Did you ever notice that humanity is evolving? Because you guys choose other than. That's the byproduct. But we're not here for humanity. Humanity is not in trouble. They need no help. We're here for you. So I, you, am talking to you so you know that you can be different to enjoy creation. Not to avoid polarity, not to question pain, not to feel and label emptiness. Oh no, I am failed. Because those words spoken as truth validates yourself in time. When you're in that moment, you think you have a timeline. So therefore you have a lifetime. Is that fractal? But you're not. You're just that moment. And then you're not. Only in that one split second moment you choose the timeline. That's when you think you're really that depression. That timeline, that victim, or that 
hope or that glory or that image. Only in that one split second, divided by times. You've never been there for a long time. You couldn't have been. Why? Because you're now. Because you're now. So now you know when you focus on time, you get the whole story. You get to all the memories, you get the bad times, the good times, polarity. When they're not any of those, they're a creation enjoyed. Divided by time as measured. And the experience is so fucking real that the God that's experiencing it in that moment thinks it's not God. But it is. And now you have awareness. And since you have awareness, you can validate differently. Choose different truths. And they hurt. And they're scary. You want to have the pain. Because you know nothing but that. Until the pain is explored. And joyful days that are empty because you have materialism as dependencies are just as fucking painful. So don't pull that polarity shit because that's keeping you there. When you intimately know yourself as the enjoyment of this moment, then you must remember because that's vibration defaulted. That's the natural occurring. That's the law that's never questioned. It's questioned as a reality. I think that's enough for tonight. You've done that exquisitely well. Now the divinity, the divine nonchalance that you are for the rest of the evening, and knowing you have that's settled in your isness notices time, notices the focus on fractal, feels the callings, because it is relating. Very good. We are speakers. Speakers of vibration to differentiate between speakers and the other collective. We only use speakers, it's of course, the one, but we use this label because we speak. There's nothing more than that. Do you see that? Do you see I am enjoyment of speaking? It's indifferent, truly. We'll see you uh, next time.